Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a very important round. The third round of Rogelio Medina's knockout victory over Jillian Love. Now let me just say, right now we're hearing a lot about the flat-footed patient stalker style of Janady Golovkin. A lot of fans are mesmerized by it. Right? They think this is the first time in boxing history that a guy has been able to walk through opponents on his front foot, look dominant doing so, right? have a huge KO percentage, and have guys literally dropping in what seems to be every fight. Right? What I want you to do is compare and contrast Rogelio Medina's fight style. Front foot heavy, throwing a lot of power shots, trying to walk through opponents. With Janady Golovkin's fight style, I've placed a Jelly in Love, Rogelio Medina fight film in my favorites folder on my YouTube channel page, Dwyer 70905. I hope you give it a look. Right, let's talk about mistakes guys make against this kind of fighter right if you want to see how to not fight this type of fighter if you want to see a mistake filled round by a guy who should have known better just take a look at the third round just take a look at jelly and loves strategy if you can call it that now understand anyone who's watched boxing longer than 10 years and I know there are a lot of OGs watching this video nodding their heads right now know that sooner or later these front foot heavy stalker guys run into problems right because quite frankly they're flawed right you know when you're fighting a front foot heavy guy who's trying to walk through you right you know that that guy likely doesn't have a back foot game. Most of these guys can't switch it up. They can't go in reverse. Right? They don't know how to keep you off of them with a jab while backing up. In fact, they don't know how to do much backing up. Right? They can't time what they're doing backing up and then as they back up, throw uppercuts, throw what Ray Robinson used to call an anchor punch. Right? These guys are so accustomed to stalking you, they don't even know how to clinch. Right? It looks good if they pick the right opponent. Someone who's going to stand and trade with them or try to just run away. Right? But it doesn't work against guys who have strategies to handle the nonstop aggression. So, for a moment here, let's switch places with Jelly and Love. It's the third round. You're in the corner. You're listening to your cornerman right before the round. You already know what your opponent's going to do in that round, don't you? Medina, what's he going to do? He's not going to get on his toes and dance around you. You know you're not going to have to deal with lateral movement. Right? He's not going to have some kind of game where you're coming in and he's hitting you with jabs and your head snapping back. You know, you know that's not going to be the game. Right? You know that already, right? In fact, you know he's going to come stalk you. You know where he's going to be, right in front of you, stalking you. If he's basic, he'll be right in front of you. If he's a little bit more clever, he'll be a little bit off at the side. 
right? Medina doesn't even have great ring coverage. In other words, we're not talking about a guy who you think is too far away to hit you. And then as he throws punches, think David Hay, he's able to cover the distance. So you know just from where he is whether or not he can land punches on you. Now Jelly in Love comes out. And against a guy like this, I believe you have two choices. Right? The first choice is if you're going to move, right, if you're going to go back foot as a response to this guy's front foot, if you're going to move around the ring like Daniel Gill did against Janady Golovkin, then you've got to be firing some bullets back because if you're not throwing punches back, then you're running. You're not moving, right? And so you need to have the guy walking into shots, don't you? He's front foot heavy. He's coming straight at you, right? You should be throwing, at a minimum, a jab, shouldn't you? Your movement, in fact, should be designed to set up your offense, shouldn't it? Right? So, you shouldn't just be moving around the ring. You should be moving to spots, right? Literally, you should be in front of the guy moving to spots that allow you to get off the punches you want to get off. Right? If you're advanced, your footwork should be such that as you move to a spot, your feet should allow you to throw different kinds of punches. Right? Mayweather, from the same stance, can throw that lead left hook or he can throw that straight right hand. Right? Or he can dip a little bit and hit you with straight punches to the body. Keep the other guy guessing, right? But the point is, you know the guy is following you. You'll notice Golovkin, who's clever, will spend the early part of a fight looking at his opponent, watching his feet, figuring out the angles, right? So, Understanding that the other guy has to get up on you to hurt you. And that the other guy is going to be the stalker stalking you. You have to use that against him. Right? So stuff that looks like gravy to fans. Right? Guys who are walking around the ring and shuffling their feet. They're actually hiding their feet from their opponent. Right? So Jelly and Love, as Medina comes in, if he's going to move, then he should have been firing bullets back. His movement should have been married to his offense. Right? You know the guy's following you around the ring. So he should be the person shooting a jab. Having the guy walk into his jab, right? Moving subtly to the sides and then throwing punches, right? He should have had offense coming back. When you watch these old Ali films, understand Ali's the guy flicking the jab. Right? The point of being on your back foot is you're setting up traps. As the guy comes in, you already have your stance worked out where you know what you're going to throw. Right? Think Juan Manuel Marquez against Manny Pacquiao. Right? Pacquiao's front foot heavy. Marquez has treats for him. It's literally trick or treat, right? Marquez has treats for him already 
set up. So as Pacquiao comes forward, Marquez knows what he's going to throw. Marquez is just not backing up in a shell. He's backing up with a purpose. In this fight, Jelly and Love has no purpose. Watch him back up and ask yourself what offense is he coming back with? What's he trying to set up? Isn't Medina being predictable? Medina follows him around the ring aggressively. He's not even, you know, trying to time it like Golovkin. He's just following him around the ring. Right? Jelly and Love is not trying to set up a left hook or a jab, or a punch to the body. He's not doing any of that. He's just moving away. Right? So he just becomes the hunted. Right? There's no bilateral part of this fight in that third round. Jelly and Love's just moving away. There's not enough method to the movement. That's the first thing. Right? If you're going to move, at least figure out what you're going to tag the other guy with as you move. Right? You have to discourage your opponent. You know, figure out what offense you're going to have as you employ a back foot game. Your back foot game has to have some offense. It can't just be you moving away. That's not the way it works. Now let's talk about another alternative Jelly and Love had. And I believe this is what you're going to see in the upcoming Floyd Mayweather Marcus Maidana fight. He could have planted his front foot. Literally, just drawn a line in the sand, planted his front foot, and let Medina walk into his shoulder. If you have an inside game, right? If you have defense, then you don't have to move away from a stalker, right? In fact, a lot of these stalker guys can only operate at mid-range, right? They need some space to throw hooks. Think Marcus Maidana. He's not throwing short straight punches. He's throwing hooks that require leverage. So he actually, as he's stalking you, needs a little room to operate. Right? It's kind of like an egg. Right? He can operate at shell level. But if you crack the shell, then there's nothing there but yolk. So understand, in some Mayweather fights, in some Andre Ward fights, you're going to notice that the guys don't move that much. Right? You're actually going to notice that the first Mayweather Madonna fight, when Floyd takes over the fight, and I, again, I didn't think that fight was that close. When Floyd takes over the fight and kills Madonna's angles, Right? Understand he's in the middle of the ring. Madonna comes over. He knows if he can get his shoulder between Madonna's wide punches, he's neutralized one half of Madonna's game. Right? Two handed fighter coming forward like a crab. If you plant your shoulder between the crab, right it messes up the angles for the stalker right let's be real too these stalker guys they're not great boxers did you know Medina had been knocked out three times going into yesterday's match against Jelly and Love did you know that he had lost six fights going into yesterday's match against Jelly and Love he was a knockout artist, not a boxer. So all I'm saying is the guys who can fight inside, they don't have to run. 
against these stalking, wide-punching power guys, right? They can set up shop. You know the angles where the punches are coming from, right? You know that this guy's going to come in and he's going to throw hooks and wide punches, maybe as a straight right hand to go with it. Right, but hand speed isn't the forte of most of these power punching guys. And you know the guy's flat footed, so there's going to be a little gap where you can move a bit. Right, because it takes these flat footed guys a little bit of effort to move. Right, they don't move as quickly as guys who are up on their toes. So you'll notice with the Mayweather, he'll have a guy walk into a shoulder, he'll have his head tucked. He'll have a hand up, guarding his chin. There's a vertical component. He's bending at the waist. Then, of course, you'll notice that there's some clinching involved, right? They're able to break the rhythm of the guy who's stalking them by clinching at times. Or they might just, you know, get off specific punches, right? You know, straight right hands. Understand, if you're at a side dynamic against a guy coming in like Powell Wolak, right, you know, his feet are pretty much straight. Look at Janady Golovkin's feet when he gets hit with the last punch Jan Daniel Gill throws in that fight. These guys are open to get hit. Understand, they're banking on you, not boxing them but trying to either slug it out with them or move away from them. They're not prepared for a guy who comes in with a tight game, a tight defense, who's prepared to literally hide his head and go to the body. Right? They're not prepared for that in the slightest. They're not prepared for guys tying them up. Look at the Floyd Mayweather Maidana fight. You know, Floyd hits Maidana several times, several times, with straight punches to the body. Then he starts coming up top with uppercuts and stuff like that. The key is, all of it's straight, because that part is open on Maidana. You know what? That part is open on Medina, yesterday. Jillian Love is too busy moving away to actually come in and box Medina. It's even worse than that. He's moving along the ropes. He has nowhere to go when he gets hit with the left hook that pretty much ends the fight. In fact, it does end the fight. Right? So, you know, just to understand, Jillian Love, decent puncher. He'd been dropped by Gabe Rosado. He'd been uh, dropped by uh, Paraben, right? I would question his strategy. I would question his defense. I would question his willingness to fight inside. I would question the method behind his movement, right? Understand, if you're going to employ a back foot game, you have to let your opponent pay. Your back foot game needs to have some offense, Right? Mayweather was accused of running against Robert Guerrero. But yet he's hitting Guerrero with power shots at a greater than 50% clip. Take a look at the CompuBox numbers. As Guerrero comes forward, Mayweather is timing straight right hands. Right? Because he knows Guerrero's going to be on his front foot coming forward. Right? The point is, that part of Jalen Love's game is missing here. Right, As Medina comes forward, it didn't look like Jalen Love had an offensive game plan. Right, Why not have him walk into a jab? Why not have him walk into a left hook? Why not plan a dip a shoulder? You know the way it is. Keep in mind, if you have your shoulder between the guy's hands. Then when you dip the shoulder and you raise a hand, you tie up his hand over here. Then, of course, 
you can keep your head inside and then start working the body. Medina's other hand might not be that good. Up close. Look at the gap between the fighters before Medina ends the show with the left hook. In my opinion, Jelly and Love should have closed that gap since he's the one who moved to the corner. He knew he couldn't go backward. So he should have been either smothering angles or making sure he set the angles. Here he didn't do either. Let me hear from you. I know Medina's fight style looked great. He looked dominant. Looks like he walked through Jelly and Love. Understand, he had six losses coming into the fight. Right? Jonathan Gonzalez had just beaten him by split decision. Right? Understand, these front foot heavy guys look great in wins but have holes in their game. As you watch this video, do you know whether Medina can fight on his back foot? Right? Do you know whether Medina would be able to handle a guy who could come in and clinch him? Get inside of his wide punches and actually start riddling his body? In my opinion, those questions remain unanswered. I've read where Medina now is calling out Anthony Durrell. Durrell can throw straight punches, folks. Durrell has a jab. Right? We didn't see either from Jelly and Love yesterday. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.